I did some things off camera. So before this video starts, I need to do a quick rundown on what I did off camera. Instead of having a giant ugly spring right here that keeps the bale open and closed, I added magnets to this side. So it wants to stay open with the magnet down here and the magnet right here. And it wants to stay closed with the magnet on the top here and then there's another one that you can't see in there and it shuts closed. It doesn't click. I was going for a click, couldn't get a click. It just kind of mushes open and the magnets hold and then it mushes closed and the magnets hold. I don't, not that big of a deal, I'm not that disappointed in it. Okay, and I added a new bale line guide. You guys were saying in the comments of the last video that fishing reels need to have a metal insert in there or a lot of them have a roller. I couldn't figure out a way to do a roller, so what I did was a brass tube is now in the center of this bale line guide and it's filled up with super glue and baking soda too and it's holding this wire in really secure. Yeah, you guys are right. It, this reel needed that or it was just going to wear a giant groove into this hickory and it wouldn't have functioned well after that. Um, I shortened this bale wire too. I just cut it down, bent it more, and stuck it in there. While I was trying to pull this out to cut it, this piece broke so I had to make a new one of these. So I was working for about a day on this reel off camera, just trying to get it to this point where it was in the last video with now these parts instead of the ugliness that was before. It looks much better, I have to say, doesn't it? It's gorgeous. More functional too. Okay, let's get on with the video. First thing to do, I'm going to finish and have a working drag on this reel today. And what I ended up going with for the drag material is carbon fiber washers. I was actually able to find some at my local hardware store. It was just in the aisle where all of the washers are in the bins, you know, and they happen to have some carbon fiber washers in there. So this will work out perfect. They just look like that. So I just realized something that I overlooked. Um, when this spool is giving out line and it's taking drag, there needs to be independence from friction on this drag knob. Otherwise the spool will just spin and unscrew the drag knob. Like that'll push up on the knob and unscrew it. There needs to be bearings between that to take friction away from the drag knob. So I just need to think of a way to do that. It took me a little while, but I figured out how to make the spool spin independently from the bearing and I can still put pressure down on the spool. The threaded rod comes up from the middle of this brass tube. The brass tube puts pressure on the middle of the bearing and then the outside of the bearing is connected to the spool. So um, the bearing wants to spin before the drag knob. Once I get the uh, this piece fixed to the threaded rod and then the drag material in place and all that stuff, all this will make a lot more sense. So on this threaded rod, I have this square nut secured to the rod and then I have this uh, 7 8 inch washer secured to that square nut and the rod. And then on top of that, I have a carbon fiber washer. And then on the bottom of the spool, there's a carbon fiber washer too. That goes on top of that. This bearing goes in there. So this drag knob is just going to put force on the top of this brass rod. It's not trimmed down to size yet, but not a problem. I can do that later. You apply force to that brass rod. It makes the inside of the bearing turn before the outside of the bearing. So it, the uh, spool stays independent from the drag knob. Next order of business is to make the part on this fishing reel that connects to the rod. And I'm going to use this fishing reel and just mold this part like that. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but this is the mold box and that's how I'm going to mold it. So I'm going to kind of 
just press this into the clay like that and it's pretty stable. I don't think pouring the silicone in will tip it over. This will be a two part mold. So I'm going to pour this side and I need to, I don't have very much silicone left. Then I'm going to flip it over and pour the other side and uh, it'll just be a nice thin flat side for the second part. This stuff's one part hardener, 10 parts silicone or base. And once again, I mixed way too much. I don't need all this, but I got enough left over to do the other side of the mold, so it's okay. I think it's like noon right now, so hopefully I can get back out here tonight, flip this over and do the other half. I usually start pouring in one spot like this, and then I don't move it. I just keep pouring right here until it's all full. I don't know if it really matters. I've just heard that it pushes all the air out. Like wherever the silicone's traveling to, it pushes the air out of the way first so you don't get any bubbles. But I've never tried it any other way after I heard you should do it this way, so it might not matter as much as I think. The section that comes right off of the crankcase, before it takes a bend right there, I already have all that made out of hickory. I just need the straight part. So that's all the higher the mold needs to go up to. So now I think I'm gonna assemble the crankcase a little bit. I'm gonna get uh, one of the clear side panels attached to the wooden part of the crankcase and it's super roughly cut out on purpose so I can sand it flush once I get it attached. I'm going to attach it with some solid brass screws. It's going to be, they're going to be screwed into the wood and countersunk into the side plate. So really it's just a matter of marking out where you want the center of your screws to be. So those holes line up right in the center of this strip of laminated hickory. Just got to transfer those nice and accurately. Yeah, I just need to make sure I get this lined up and then don't move and transfer all these holes. It's important not to move. Okay, there's where I have to drill the holes. I still need to so I still need to countersink these holes so these brass screws will sit flush in this side plate. And uh, I, I need to use a smaller bit to drill into the laminated hickory so the threads will grab those holes. I need to figure out how deep I need to go because that is awfully close to the edge. I could really mess that up and I don't want to have to redo a laminated hickory strip and set me back a ways. That's like not very deep. Okay, I gotta go deeper. The calipers say so. That'll do. Okay, now let's get these drilled. I didn't mess up. So that is the bottom portion of the crankcase put together. Yeah, that's a lot of screws. 
holding that together, but I was thinking it's gonna need it because uh, the crank handle is gonna go into the side of this and those screws are gonna be what supports all of that rotation and all of the, uh, the internal mechanisms operating are gonna depend on the, how secure these plates are to the crankcase. So I was thinking it needed it. Next up, I need to put all of the wooden parts into a can of polyurethane and then throw that in the vacuum chamber and pull a vacuum and then hang them up to dry. That way all this wood's sealed and I don't get any water penetration and warping and any, or anything like that. And yes, that means taking apart the crankcase that I just put together. I actually took everything apart. Those are all the pieces that are gonna get a polyurethane vacuum bath. While I'm getting this ready, I thought I might as well spill the beans. Um, once again, I've changed my mind and I've decided on something completely different for the gears on this reel. Somebody commented, um, I hope I can find it and put it up on the screen, about a good solution for these gears on this fishing reel would be more of a wheel and pen system where there's a brass wheel that, um, that has a whole bunch of pins sticking out of it. And those pins are gonna contact each other at a 45 degree angle and churn. I thought, uh, I thought that sounded like a pretty good idea because I wanna be able to use brass and have some strength. But with this, I don't have to like go all out and make brass gears. I can do more of a wheel and pen thing. I think I'm gonna try that because I, I, I feel like it's doable for me. We might get to that in this episode actually. But anywho, we need to pull a vacuum on this thing. Don't worry, I'll clean that out. This is my polyurethane can dedicated for vacuum sealing. Dedicated for vacuum sealing. So now all those parts sink and they're completely saturated with polyurethane. I just gotta hang them up to dry. I'm also gonna watch them for a while and uh, clean up the drip. Make sure that doesn't get out of hand. All right, that went perfect. Um, these will probably be dry to the touch sometime tonight. I guess I don't, it doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna touch them for another day. I got that mold setting up. I got those drying, so I know what to do. So I bought a set of hole saws, and these are gonna help me make the wheels for the gears. Well, they're not gears, they're like pen wheels. I'm gonna call them pen wheels. These are going to help me make the pen wheels. And, uh, I should probably do this on the drill press. That'd make a lot more sense. So, I'm just gonna have everything clamped down so that all I have to do is pull on a lever. Do you need oil for this? Probably. Awfully chattery. So I think this just needed to be clamped down harder. All right, see how this does. Changing the belts on my drill press to slow all of this down. I think that might be the problem, it's just too fast. There. Now I kind of feel stupid. But hey, we got it. There's one wheel. Let's do another now that I slowed the drill press down. This should be easier.
way smoother. Barely got hot. So now I'm gonna just uh, file off the burr that the hole saw left along all the edges. So I think there's some math to do to calculate how many and how far apart each hole for every pin should be. The pins are gonna be a 16th of an inch in diameter and they have to be equal space apart so that they mesh correctly. So I need to figure out circumference and I have to calculate on center how far apart each pin should be from each other around the circumference. And it's the circumference of the center of the pen, not the circumference of the wheel. So I'm gonna do some math really quick and, and we'll get to it. It's the next day and pretty much what's happening here is I've been figuring out the radius circumference and then dividing the circumference by a measurement that I have for a goal that I want for space between each pen and figuring out what the best number of pens would be on these wheels depending on the circumference of the center of the pens on each wheel. Um, I'm leaving about three times as much space between the center of each pen as the thickness of the pens. I'm guessing that'll be appropriate. Well, we'll find out if that's appropriate. Looks appropriate. I was thinking that with three times as much space as the pins are thick, it would, uh, even if one of the gears have pins that are close, a little bit closer together, there's still a lot of wiggle room where they'll catch and they won't bind. It might, it might end up having a little bit of clackiness in the reel. There'll be a little bit of like a, a tick or a, when the pins engage each other, but should be fine after that. So yeah, I'm just taking these numbers that I came up with as the space between each pin, and then I'm accounting for the radius, putting that in my calipers, and then just marking each space out. So from the handle revolutions to the bale spinning, it's gonna have a eight to 15 ratio. So for fishing reel standards, that's pretty, pretty crappy ratios, but I don't really care. It's my first one, you know? I'm gonna get these marked out. Oh, and I didn't open up the mold yet. I didn't do that last night, so we can do that after this. So I'm gonna have to pop this off, flip it over, and find some way to support it from the bottom of this box while the reel is still attached, and then pour the other side. And push that down a little bit, because it comes over the top here. Now there's plenty of room to pour the other side. I'll just have it like that. So we probably won't see the results until the next video, but I'm all out of mold release, store-bought mold release, but I do have uh, motor oil and a little oil dispenser like this, and I've never tried using motor oil as a mold release. It'll probably work, you know? I think I would only be concerned about the silicone having issues hardening and setting up because something in the motor oil is re reacting with the silicone. Might as well see if it works. It's a good opportunity to experiment a little bit too because this side of the mold's really not that important. If I need to go back in a Dremel and make this little radius, this concave radius right here, I can. It's not a big deal. If it works good, that's convenient because you always got motor oil on hand. Found something convenient at the hardware store while I was getting supplies for this fishing reel. They got cork stops, big ones too, that are already conveniently shaped just like a uh, fishing reel handle. So I'm gonna use this instead of the hickory one that I made, the little one. It'll look like the cool fishing reels with the oversized handles, you know, the big power grips. Was that, is that what they call them? Um, okay.
show you where I'm at. Every single wooden part on this fishing reel has been vacuum sealed. So it should be able to withstand the elements and plenty of use. We've got a working drag system up in there. Runs smooth now. I even ended up adding an extra aluminum bushing. You can kind of see it in there. Should probably show it to you guys properly. Instead of putting force on the inside of that bearing, it puts force more on the top right there. And that uh, brass just kind of aligns it properly. That little bushing really smoothed out this drag. Yeah, we worked on the side plates. We got them so they can be fastened to the crankcase. We've got a new system for the drive mechanism in the crankcase, wheel and pin with brass, it'll have strength. The connection to the rod is getting molded. One more video. We'll have this reel done. We'll see if all of this hard work has amounted to anything. Hopefully it amounts to a functioning fishing reel. I don't think I've ever worked on one thing for so long and put this much consciousness into something <laughs> this many waking hours into something you know makes the end product extra special though you know extra worth it really i think i picked up a new hobby fishing reels and mechanisms fishing mechanisms or just more fishing lures you know anyway let's get this thing finished up first on to the next Fishing Reel Video.